Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 114 of Build Your Stash and Craft. So we'll see if this one goes well. I already had to stop, I had to stop and start over because I was having just such a hard time getting my hands to work. So we'll see if we're better now. Okay, um, what we're going to try and do is replicate this beaded trim. And the the fishing line that I got is four pounds. And if you haven't got your fishing line yet, um, this is a little thicker than four pounds. I couldn't tell you what it is, but it is definitely a little bit stiffer so that when you, it, it kind of goes down a little bit, but the four pounds really bends down. But um, I use these um, in flowers. And when I first saw these, I thought they were just gorgeous in, you know, just a little loop in a flower or two little loops. And when I went to the craft store to find it, it was really quite expensive. So I came home and made my own. And um, I must have used a little bit of a heavier fishing line because mine did stand up a little bit better than this. But these are still going to work just fine. And um, and if you got heavier than four pounds or if you haven't got it yet, um, you know, get a little bit heavier than four pounds. And it'll be a little bit stiffer. So... I've already, um, let's see here. I'll show you how there's different ways to do it. This here is just glued and they stick pretty good. I was just doing this a little bit ago and rubbing my hands across it and I broke this one free. So I'd have to put a little bit more glue back on that one. But the rest of them, you know, they hold pretty good. This one here is just with the fishing line wound through the beads and the bugle beads don't move once you've wound the string through them but all of your round beads they will move so it makes it a little bit adjustable but they do they do stay pretty good and then this one is with the fishing line wound around the beads and then a little bit of the glue put on both sides and that's going to be your most sturdy where once that glue dries they're not going to go anywhere so i'm going to show you how to do those and first i'm going to show you how to make the the holder and i've already done this so i'm going to have to just kind of walk you through it um, this is just a piece of cardboard and I took a piece of our parchment paper and I just wrapped it around the board until it was about an inch on each side on the back. Then I put some down some of our super glue and then I put our tape on here trying to, I thought maybe the super glue might soak through a little bit. It doesn't really seem to be, but I put the, uh, the tape on here touching where the super glue was just in case it seeps through that maybe it would catch that tape and glue it to the parchment. Um, parchment is very hard to hold down because it's not meant for anything to stick to it. So even the super glue doesn't stick to it. That's why we're using it for our beads. So, but just wrap a piece of parchment and then after you get it wrapped, glued and taped, then just go along the edges and really crease them well so that you get that really nice crease on there. I think that will help, you know, the, the paper's not trying to unroll and that way that will help things stay down a little bit better and help it stay around your piece of cardboard. Then what I did was I just took a marker and I went through and I did not measure these exactly. I just about every inch or so I just put a black mark on both ends that are about lining up and then just took my X-Acto knife about a half of an inch up and just cut straight through and made sure that I cut all the way through to the other side because we're going to put our string through there so we need that to go all the way through. Once we get these little grooves cut in here um, then we're ready to get our fishing line ready. Now what I did with my fishing line when I first got it I took my um, saw and I just took my saw and I just cut a little angle in the plastic right there if you can see it right there just to kind of bring my string through this um, groove is too wide to actually hold the fishing line so I taped it on the top but I still like to have a place to pull it into before I tape it when I did the tape what I did was I just took a piece of masking tape and folded it over a couple of times so that this top part isn't sticky just folded it over and then folded it over again that gives me a tab to grab onto so that after I was done unwinding my fishing line and I got it all unwound, then I could just come into this little groove that I have there that you probably can't see and, um, and then just held that down 
and then just put the tape on top of it. Now with this little tab on here, you can just grab a hold of that, take it off, use as much fishing line as you want, bring it back through the groove, and tape it back down again. This is 700 yards. You really don't want this unwinding and having to try and wind it back up again. So always make sure the second you cut your fishing line, usually I take off my fishing line, I put it back through here, I tape it down, and then I cut it. <coughs> Excuse me. So I actually have a piece of fishing line here, which you're not going to be able to see. But um, And what I did was I just went to the end and I just tied a couple of knots and tried to make them wind up in the same spot to make a, a fatter knot. And um, then I just took where that knot was and slid it through one of my slits, just like that. And then what I do to make sure that it stays is I just take one of our um, clothespins and put it on there to make sure that the flat part of the clothespin is right in the middle, or your fishing line is right in the middle of the flat part of your clothespin so that that's actually giving it some pressure and holding it down. So first, and I'm gonna use some dark beads here. So the first thing we're gonna do is just do the one where it's just glued. So we're just going to take some of these. Now you don't need a whole bunch of them because well, it depends on what you're going to use them for. Like I said, I like to use them as little loops on flowers in between the layers. And so you only need about, you know, like maybe four or five inches. And your beads are spaced apart, so you don't even need four or five inches of beads. You just need it to be four or five inches from start to finish. And so just put some beads on here. And you can always add more if you don't feel like you have enough. But you don't have to make it really long. And so, you know, you might want to just make um, quite a few of different colors. Or put some on and then put on another color. And, you know, you can do them all in a line, leaving maybe a 5-inch space between them. So that when you go to cut them... Um, you're not wasting any space where your beads are. You're just um, cutting the wire so that you've got some, or you're cutting the fishing line so that you have a place for your fishing line to tuck into your flower and all the beady part is still sticking out of your flower. Let's see, how many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do like three more. Let's, let's do 10. If I can find the end of my line again, there it is. And um, the fishing line works pretty good to, to feed onto your seed beads because it is stiff enough that you can just put it right through the seed bead without having to have any kind of a needle. And I think that this was the very thinnest fishing line that, I, that they had there. So... Um, you know, this is going to be the thinnest, and it still is nice and stiff. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fishing line, and I'm going to put it through the slot on this end. And again, I'm going to take a clothespin and make sure that I get a hold of it. Because this just makes it so much easier to do it that way. And then I'm just going to take um, some of the gel super glue. And super glue sticks to like glass, plastic, it sticks to everything, and it's very strong. So you really do want to have the super glue, but you want the gel kind so that it doesn't just run away. Like, you know, some super glue is just very watery, literally like water, and you drip it on there and it will just kind of run away, so, or run off or whatever. So I just put a little bit of that on here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some fishing line on the end so that I have some to tuck in. And then I'm just going to take some of my glue, put it, put a little dab of it on the fishing line, and just slide that bead right to that dab. Put another little dab and slide the next bead. And and I actually do kind of put like a little bit of a dab, you know. You I can actually see a little bit of um like a little bubble or something of glue there because I want that to kind of get inside of my bead and hold on to it. And then once I get them all glued, 
then all you do is you just set it aside and let it dry. Now you're really going to want to let it dry for a while. Even though super glue is supposed to dry, dry like really quickly, you've got glass here, you've got plastic here, and you know, you're going to want to be able to move them around and stuff without knocking them loose. And the, the holes are much bigger than the fishing line, so it's only touching in one spot. Whatever part of the hole is touching the fishing line. So just let it sit for as long as you feel you need to. But I would say overnight. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of slide slide them to the spacing that I think that they need to be spaced. I'm spacing them probably about a half an inch here. You want them close enough so that when you make your little like petal or whatever, you know, just your little half round, um, that you see more than just a couple. And there we go. So now those are all wet, but I'm going to let them sit down. They shouldn't stick to the parchment, so that should be good. I am going to tighten up my string a little bit, and I'm just going to do that by grabbing it from underneath and just giving it a pull. Don't pull too hard, because you do have a knot at this end, and you do have the clip at this end, but if you pull really hard, it's slippery, it will slip through. So there we go. That's our first way to make it. Now the next way to make it is to wrap the the fishing line around the beads. And with this one you're going to need a little extra fishing line than what you think so that I don't want to cut that yet. I'm going to tuck it. Tuck it through here. Put my tape on. Nope. Bring it over to where the tape's actually going to catch it. And now cut it off because you're going to go around the beads so you want to have some extra some extra fishing line and because you're going to take some of that up by going around each of the beads and I'm just going to tie a knot in the end of this and try and tie another knot that lands in the same spot There we go, and I'm not pulling the knot super tight, so that lets it be even a little bit bigger. And then I'm just gonna go to the next slit and just slide the knot underneath the cardboard, pull it up there. Don't forget to put your clip on so that you're not part way through and the thing lets loose and everything goes flying. All right, so we'll do this one, we'll do this darker pink. It's, it's I hopefully pretty easy to see. So now I'm going to show you one other thing that I did is I took my permanent marker and I found the end of my fishing line and let me just find something to set it on here. And I just put a little bit of the black permanent marker on there. Now it doesn't show up super well, but it does it does help for you to know exactly where that end is at. I'll see if you can see it but see it does it does show up a little bit so that's just that's just a good way to be able to see that especially when you're wrapping the beads because you got to put it in and then put it back through again so you're just going to put your bead on okay and then you're going to hold your bead and take your string and go back through the bead from the same side you went through the first time. So you're wrapping right around the bead. Okay, now with the round ones, you can wrap all the way around it, and then you can slide it to where you want it to go. With the bugle beads, you can't. With the bugle beads, you need to get it all the way down here and then wrap it and then kind of adjust it because they don't want to move at all, which is actually kind of a nice thing um, because they kind of lock lock themselves right in place. Now if I can find the hole of this one. And then just come back around. 
and go through the same side you went through the, the same part of the hole you went through the first time so that you wrapped all the way around the bead and there's a little tension behind it so if you wanted to leave it that way you could um, but they but they really will move especially if they're all the round ones um, they will move if you don't put a little bit of glue on them so and you know which end of the bead to go through because you're coming out this side so you know that you have to go back through the other side just like that okay and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put like 10 of them on here and then I will be right back okay I'm back and I have 10 of them on here so that is I just continued on until I got 10 on there so that's how you do them if you just want to wrap them now if you just wrap them they will be able to move to anywhere that you want them to move and but what I like to do is once I kind of get them where I want them and get them evenly spaced the way that I want them spaced um, then I usually grab both ends of the um, fishing line and just kind of give it a bit of a pull just hold it for a second kind of stretch it like into that you know so it doesn't want to come unwound and um, and then if you want to leave it that way you can but knowing that they will you know possibly move on you I'm gonna tuck it into the end and put a clip on it and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just take a little bit of glue and then just use the tip of our skewer you can use a toothpick or whatever and just pick up a little bit and I'm just going to touch both sides of my bead with a little bit of glue and that will help it be really sturdy because now you've got the glue and you've got the wrap and the thing is you can sit in the evenings and just you know put your beads on here wrap your wrap your a fishing line through put on another one and just sit there and do that in the evening you can let them all push together they can be far apart and then when you're ready to do the gluing part and get them adjusted just how you want them um, then you just get your and I would use this anyways though when you're doing it because it's a whole lot easier to have your fishing line hooked to something solid when you're using it so it's not just flipping all over the place but um but you could still just go ahead and put as many on there as you want to. Um, you could do this whole thing, just solid beads, and then just leave your fishing line long, and then go back at another time, and then just start adjusting them out and gluing them. So I need a little bit more glue because I still need to get my last two. And I try not to put out too much glue at one time because it does dry fast and it gets kind of jelly-like. Well, it already is a gel glue, but it gets even more jelly-like. And then it's much easier to see like on the wire. When, it's, when it first comes out, um, it's very clear and it really kind of blends right in. And if you start picking up the ones that have the gel on them, then that kind of you know shows up on your wire there just kind of wiping a little bit of that off that was kind of jelly like okay so now we have them without wrapping them we have them wrapped and we have them wrapped and glued so and then what you do is you just let them dry and then you can use them in your flowers I had some flowers with these on them I don't know I must have given them all away because I couldn't find any but um you just take a flower and you know I prefer like this like with fabric flowers with doilies and that type of thing um all right blue's not going to go but i'm going to do the blue because it'll show up on that pink flower a little better and so then you just take however much of it you think you want 
and just kind of curl it up like that. I always like to have one bead on the end, so do five or seven or whatever, and then you just tuck them into your flower and glue them in, and then you just got this really pretty loop. Now, um, see my loop has kind of spaced out right there, because what I forgot to do was what I usually do is Take the fishing line and twist it a couple of times so that now it's kind of twisted right here and you have a loop right there. So then when you glue it in, you glue it in where it's twisted and then it stays more like a loop. And actually, I really wanted that blue one at the end. So let's do two light blues, one dark blue and then twist it. And tuck it into your flower and then you've got this pretty little um, bead dangle, whatever you want to call it, but um, beaded trim. And you know, you can use this, you can use it any way you want. You can put this in with your, um, if you're making um, I can't think of it, you know, like the dangles for the side of your journals or whatever. You know, you can bead some of this and put it in there. It uses very little beads, but looks really pretty because you... Sorry about that, my daughter called. So I was just saying that, you know, you could put these on the dangles on the side of your journals or even, you know, you could even put them inside of a journal, like right at the spine, because they're so tiny that they would fit in there and they would just be a nice little pretty addition to your journals. So this is what the bead dangles look like. And you can make them any size that you want, as long or as short as you want. But I just think that they're really, really pretty in fabric flowers. And, you know, they just make a nice addition to a lot of different projects. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. For next week, what we are going to do, oh, let me show you really quick. I wanted to show you, don't forget to tape your beads shut. And the way that I usually do it is I just take a piece of masking tape and I fold over the top so that I've got a part that's not sticky. And then I just tape it shut so that that little folded part is on the top. And that way when I want to get that tape off, I don't have to cut it each time or try and get it off of there. I can just grab this little flap and then just take it off and then just put it back on again when I'm done. And, um, you know, that will hold your beads shut because you definitely don't want those going all over the place. So for next week, what we're going to do is we have $31.50 in our bank. We're going to spend $20 of it. And so what we are going to pick up, I got this at Walmart for $18.73. And this is a hyper tough 1.5 amp rotary tool. Now this is corded. If you look at the ones that are not that do not have a cord on them, they are a lot more expensive. If you look at the ones that are actually called Dremels, they are a lot more expensive. I do have a Dremel and I do have one of these that is not a name brand and my non-name brand works just as well as my Dremel does. So, you know, for the little things we're going to use it for, if you were going to use it for something over and over and over and it was going to be some tough work, you may want to get something like a Dremel that's a, a little bit more heavy duty. But for the crafty things we're going to do, we don't need something like that. So we don't need to spend $50 for something. I prefer corded tools because they never run out of batteries. It just seems like every time I go to get one of my cordless tools that the battery's dead or I get just about done with my project and the battery dies and then you gotta wait three or four hours for it to, um, you know, uh, charge back up again. So I do like the corded ones and the corded ones, like I said, you can get this one for $18.79. So we're gonna spend $20 on a rotary cutter for next week. Um, make sure that it has a drill bit in it because we are going to use the drill next week um, out of this and I thought about just getting a drill but it's nicer to have all of these differences. Um, it's got little sanders and all sorts of things that we can use. So we're going to get this for next week and that will leave us with $11.50 in our bank. And then for our regular $5 for next week we are going to spend $2.00 and we are going to buy some ping pong balls at the Dollar Tree or anything approximately this size that's round. And we are going to get um, some little mini cups. And 
These ones I've had for a little while, so if you can't find this type at the Dollar Tree, you can always get the mini Solo Cups. They have those all the time. And so we want these little tiny cups and, um, and some ping pong balls. So that'll put actually another $3 back in our bank because we're only going to spend $2 next week. And um, so then we will have... Um, we're going to spend $2, so we're going to add $3 to our 1150. We'll have 1450 still in our bank. So, thank you very much for watching. Oh, also for next week we are going to need um some of the little buttons that we made, um you know where we glued three or four layers. This one is one, two. This is four layers of of cereal box um glued together. And um, you might want one of these, just so that you know. And we're going to be making some more of these, actually, in a couple of weeks. So if you get to making some, make a few extras. And also we'll need some skewers and our wire and some of our homemade um, beads. So those are the things that we'll need. Oh, and some of our painty fabric. So those are the things that we'll need for next week. Thank you very much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you do like this project. I think that they look really cute. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.